make Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear Then there is a, then at some point you will be moved. Now there are two possibilities coming out of the hospital. Well, there are three, you could die, right? But there are two real possibilities. You could either go to rehab uh, or you could go home. What, hap what if you're going to rehab? Now, next slide. Uh, the question, now we just talked about this question. Uh, if you are going to rehab after you have spent uh, at least three days admitted to a hospital, then Medicare Part B is going to pay for rehab. Medicare Part A pays for the hospital. Medicare Part B pays for rehab and other stuff, right? If you have not been admitted for three days and you head to that rehab facility, you're paying. That is on your dime. So the question of who's paying, this is in, in rehab, now we're talking some big numbers. I mean, it's not like hospital numbers. It's not thousands of dollars a day, you know, but it's several hundred dollars a day. So that's one of the reasons why you want to make sure that you've been admitted to the hospital. Next slide. Uh, what to worry about? How long can you stay at the hospital? We're going to talk about that one a little bit, a little bit, in a little bit. Uh, are you getting better? At what, and I'm going to take all questions after, when, when, when we're done. Are you, are you getting better while you, while you are at um, rehab? And when can you go home? Because everybody's goal in life is to get home, right? Especially if you just fell down. If you're not feeling, you don't want to be spending sick time someplace other than home. So the question is kind of when can you get home? and who's paying. So if you've been at the hospital admitted for three days, then Medicare is paying. Uh, if you haven't, then either you're paying or MassHealth is paying. We're going to talk about MassHealth a little bit later, but chances are because unless you're there for a long-term care stay, um, you are still considered for MassHealth purposes, which is Medicaid, to be a community, a, a community person and therefore the amount of income you can have to qualify for Medicaid is really low. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. The next question, though, is what drugs do or don't you need? And I just want to go, I want to go back. Remember when you got to the hospital, right, all of the things that you were prescribed, you can't bring them with you there. Now you get to this place, right, uh, to the rehab center. Now, once again, you're fortunate because it's Nantucket, right? So the re where's the rehab center? Like it's right there, right? Everything is like really close. But if you're going off island, if you're going someplace else, the rehab center is not using the same pharmacy as the hospital used. And they're also not using your doctor. They have their own pharmacy. There are actually specialized pharmacies that basically just, just ship drugs to rehab centers. So you want to be really sure and you want it with your family member or the person that you trust who is figuring out your issues medically that whatever the list of drugs was that the final discharging doctor at the hospital used is the same as the list of drugs that the guy at the rehab center is using and that everybody kind of knows your prescriptions. I cannot emphasize more how important this is. I regularly have clients who something bad happened, you know, and they ended up in the hospital it, for one thing, but things get all screwed up, you know, and they come back and they're not, you know, and there's somebody's hallucinating or they're in the, you know, rehab way too long or it's typically because of the drugs because one of those steps was missed between home and hospital and between hospital and rehab. Next slide. Finally, uh, Jimmo versus Sebelius. Has anybody heard of Jimmo versus Sebelius? Do we do the handout also? Yeah. The, okay. This is really, really big news. Uh, there was a Vermont case, um, Jimmo versus Sebelius. Sebelius is, is, uh, um, Sebelius is the director of the, the, the Secretary of Health and Human Service, Services nationally. And the, and the, the, the case was, ba was based on the question, does Medicare, when they are paying uh, for your rehab services or home services, we're going to talk about that, are they paying, uh, the, let me step back. Medicare is, is health insurance for the old. What does health insurance pay for? Health insurance pays for the cost of getting better if you're sick, right? That's why Medicare doesn't co cover more than 100 days in a rehab center because after 100 days they're saying, you're not just sick anymore getting better, you're kind of there for the long run and so we're going to stop paying, right? But the question is, so what, are the, what, sh what should be the standard 
through which they just, Medicare decides whether they're paying when you're in the rehab. And for years, Medicare has been taking the position that, that the standard is whether you're getting better, right? So you are entitled under Medicare to up to these 100 days uh, um, in, in rehab to the, for, for Medicare to pay ex unless you stop getting better. And I think a lot of people have had, been in that kind of situation where they thought they were in you know, the, the, uh, the rehab and everything was kind of going along and all of a sudden they get this notice from the, from the rehab, sorry, your benefits are stopping tomorrow, right, or the next day. So there was a, there was a, a class action suit that was filed by a bunch of people in Vermont, actually. Uh, and last October, there was a settlement because the government didn't want to go to trial. And that settlement got accepted by the judge in January. So this just happened. So many, many, many places aren't aware of this yet, right? And the settlement said that th th there was an agreement that what the standard was supposed to be all these years, the written standard, but it had not, hadn't been implemented by Medicare, was not, are you getting better? Is the treatment causing you to get better? But is the treatment necessary so that you won't get worse, right? Wow. That's a really big, big difference, right? Yeah. And the reason why I mention this is if you find yourself in this situation, right, it may very well be that your rehab center doesn't know this, right? This, is, this stuff, it's strange, you know, it's the nature of information. It's kind of like filtering through the system, right? Medicare has not yet revised its manual to say this to all these people to whom it's paying. They are required under the terms of the decision to have revised their manual by January of next year. So if in the interim you're stuck in one of these places, I shouldn't say stuck, you're in one of these places and you know you need it. I mean you don't want to be there. I don't mean it's like torture, but you're like who wants to be there, right? So if you are there and this issue comes up, one of, the, one, of the, we, we, one of the things that we passed out was a one sheet both sides and it's the fact sheet that actually got done by CMS the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Financing, the federal agency that administers Medicare. That's the fact sheet, and it describes Jumo versus Sebelius. Next slide. Uh, so that's it. Not getting worse versus getting better. Next slide. So, next question. What about if you're going home? What about if you have been in rehab or if you've been in the hospital and now, thank God, you've got a discharge plan that says you can go home? How do you figure out What's going to happen at home? What is going to be the program? Because you're probably not going home and like you're ready to go hiking that day, you know? So question, what happens when you go home? Next slide. What to worry about? What do you need at home? What is your care plan? What is the role of nurses or home health aides, right? Very different kinds of people. Uh, what is the family's role and who pays? And have your drugs changed? Now, I'm, I, I'm, we're lucky that again, we have, how, how many people were here last time? I see, I see some, from, look at that, everybody came back. I'm so, thank you very much, right? So you all met Ella Finn last time from the Visiting Nurses Association. Um, and I've asked Ella to come back because this is actually one of the most crucial roles that the Visiting Nurses Association plays, is helping figure out this kind of package of things. But I just want to mention one thing before she gets up, and that's the, once again, just the, the, uh, um, the drugs issue, right? Remember, the prescription that you're going home with was done either by a doctor at the hospital or a doctor at rehab. Now, neither of them knows or should know what your Medicare D plan is, right? And therefore, neither of them knows whether that list contains drugs that are on your list and are therefore going to be covered by your Medicare D plan. Now, it may very well be that some of the drugs on, the doctor, on that doctor's list, right, have comparable drugs that are on your list. But the only way those drugs are going to get paid for is if your doctor changes the drugs, right? If you get home and you, do, and you get your doctor to do the substitute to make sure that the drugs that you're using when you're at home are the drugs that are on your Medicare Part D plan. Just as a little observation. Now, Ella, can we just yeah. talk about how the visiting nurse, how you approach this, right? What happens? I will. Thank you. So and I, I have to stay close so that they can hear me. Okay. How about this? Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us again today. I just wanted to go back on a couple of things that you, uh, slides that you covered there. She's going to tell me I was wrong. No, oh, no, 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 I'm not me. at all. Oh, I'm just oh, going to reinforce oh. something. Um, part of that whole observation admission status when you get to the hospital 
has to do certainly with reimbursement for the hospital, but it also has to do with another part where hospitals now are penalized for uh, readmissions. So, for example, I have patients who are frail or who have um, chronic conditions, but they suffer exacerbations from time to time. So they go to the ER, they're brought upstairs to be uh, under observation, and they're kept under observation even though they stay overnight, or they may even stay two nights, or they may even stay three nights, but they never become admitted, because if they do, the flag goes up um, and the hospital gets dinged. And I they, hadn't thought of that. Yeah, they That's receive right. less money. So I should know this. I'm on the board at well, my hospital at home. Yeah, well, and, and it's it true. Is. We're getting, we're getting, yeah. like, they, they, the, the issue is there's like a baseline of re, re, readmissions. Right. And unless, in, and because we're not at that baseline, uh, if we don't drop that baseline, I think within a year, we lose, I think it's half, either a half of 1% or 1% of all of the Medicare money that gets paid to our right. hospital right. is going to get, is going to be eliminated the next year unless we drop this. Re so there's an incentive for these there hospitals to keep you from being readmitted. Well, now on, on the flip side, it's, you know, if you can stay out of hospitals, it's better for your health. Everybody recognizes that, unfortunately, hospitals can be risky places. You're exposed to the risk of infection. So, you know, the visiting nurse service is promoted because people do better at home. Um, first of all, we don't have that risk of infection. You're not exposed to other people's illnesses. Um, secondly, people do better emotionally uh, recovering at home. So that's to the benefit. And I will say as well that for the VNA, we're also penalized if we send our patients to the ER when they have exacerbations. Our job is to keep people stable at oh. home so that they don't oh. have to keep running in and out to the ER. I didn't know that. Yeah, and you know, having blood work and all of those like, very expensive tests that may not be required. Obviously, if people need to be assessed by a physician, we send them right to the ER. But you know, a lot of this has to, as you'll all know, and as I found out, much to my chagrin, money is at, at the base of all of this and it's really important to be prepared and to know going into something what it is you're up against. And with regard to the length of stay in a hospital, they use codes that are diagnosis related groupings. And for example, if you... DR, DR, DRGs. DRGs. Mm -hmm. So we'll say if you have pneumonia, lots of us get pneumonia in the winter, I've had pneumonia, and you're hospitalized, the maximum amount of time, unless you really go downhill, that you're going to get to stay in the hospital is three days. So, you know, think about an 85-year-old who possibly has some cardiac issues. You know, pneumonia may really knock you back, and three days is a very short amount of time. So, you know, being prepared and knowing what's ahead of you is, is good practice. So basically, um, what the Visiting Nurses Association does is we get referrals from hospitals, from rehabs, from doctors, your primary care physician, or your husband, wife, who's concerned about your health calls and says, you know, I think mom or my husband or wife would benefit from having uh, nursing care in the home. In order for us to provide service in the home, we have to, there are just a couple of criteria that have to be met. Um, you have to have a referral. Again, anybody can make the referral, not your neighbor. They can't, you know, decide you need someone. But, um, and you, you have to be homebound. That only means you have to be homebound for the, the time that you're not feeling well. It doesn't mean that forevermore you can't leave the house. And homebound only means that it's considerable and taxing effort for you to leave the home. It means it's difficult for you to get to doctor's appointments or to get to the lab to have your blood draws done or to get to PT at the hospital. Um, so the doctor will then write orders for us to come and develop a care plan for you. And that doctor oversees that care plan. So it's your primary care physician generally who does that or the surgeon who did your hip replacement in Boston um, or the podiatrist who's treating a wound on your foot who feels you would benefit from having a nurse assess that every few days. 